The Dakota Access Pipeline, or DAPL, has been the recent hot-button issue in news today. But how much do we really know about it? In the evening of February 22nd, after the state's eviction deadline, many of the volunteer activists left, despite the show of force from law enforcement in riot protection gear. In today's video, we will be providing general knowledge of DAPL, a brief history of how DAPL came to be, and a small history on reservations and those who live there. Let's start by locating the most affected areas of DAPL. As you can see, we are coloring in areas that are more severely affected by DAPL. The closer the residents of the surrounding area to the pipeline, the more they feel the effects of the pipeline. Here is where the pipeline is located. Now that we know where the pipeline is, the dots drawn represent the location of protesters to DAPL. On this sheet, we show all of the reservations in the surrounding area. So now that we have a visual of the location of DAPL and the location of involved peoples, we are going to focus on a bit of history. The No DAPL protest is mainly protested by American Indian indigenous peoples, affecting many of the surrounding reservations. But what is a reservation? Much of the most significant American Indian wars began in the 1700s with conflict over land ownership and land use. In 1830, President Andrew Jackson issued the Indian Removal Act, which gave the authorization of forced relocation of American Indian indigenous peoples west of the Mississippi, which had newly been claimed by the Americans. These people were herded into secluded territories a small fraction of their previous home called reservations. A reservation is a legal designated area signed through treaty or granted by the states for disposition of American Indian indigenous peoples. The U.S. government views these tribal nations as dependent domestic nations. Now that we know who the no DAPL protesters are and a small percentage of history, we will now examine how DAPL came to be. The pipeline is being constructed by Dakota Access LLC, a subsidiary of Energy Transfer Partners LP. The Energy Transfer Partners has had support from President Donald Trump, Senator John Hoven, Representative Kevin Kramer, and many more. Though these are influential supporters, the true decision makers are the Army Corps run by Acting Secretary of the Army Robert Speer. The Army Corps evaluate all the different pieces of information and testimonies given on the DAPL. Be sure to watch out for our next video. We'll be covering DAPL's connection to the University of Minnesota Moores and Morris's history as a Native American boarding school.